Which players do the Buffalo Bills need to break through in 2024? I'm breaking that down today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Well, folks, welcome in. We started this week by discussing Bills players that need to bounce back in twenty twenty four, and that conversation was centered around Von Miller, Dawson Knox, and Tyler Bass. I want to close this week by considering which players I'm looking at to break through in 2024. And when you think about the Buffalo Bills and their ascension to a contending caliber team, really since 2020, it has been about players every single year elevating their level of play to lead the Bills to sustain success. And so who are those guys this year? Well, last year, I think you could look at the success of the 2023 Bills, and it was rooted in guys like James Cook, Dalton Kincaid, Khalil Shakir, Spencer Brown, Ed Oliver, Terrell Bernard, Christian Benford. All of those guys really elevated their level of play that led to the Bills winning their fourth consecutive AFC East Division title and going to the postseason, winning a playoff game, all of that. Who are those guys this year? That's the focus of our conversation today. And I have, I got a handful of guys that I want to get to. And I want to start with some players on the offensive line, specifically the guards and mainly David Edwards. We'll get to Osiris Torrance, but I really want to lead with David Edwards because I think this is an important piece of this offensive line equation. You go back to last year's offensive line, and it was a really good group. Whether it was pass protection, run blocking, it was rock solid. And the Bills chose to disrupt that. They chose to cut Mitch Morse. They chose to trade Ryan Bates. They want to transition Connor McGovern over to center. And now you have this opportunity for David Edwards to emerge as your left guard. So let's talk a little bit about David Edwards. He's 27 years old. And he was a three-year starter for the Los Angeles Rams from 2019 through 2021. Two of those seasons was with Aaron Cromer, the Bills' current offensive line coach, when he was the offensive line coach with the Rams. So two seasons in L.A. as a starter under Aaron Cromer. It's also worth noting that Aaron Cromer was the offensive line coach when David Edwards was drafted. And position coaches have a... a bit of say when it comes to guys that the team drafts. And so you could tell there's a relationship here and some likability as it relates to Aaron Cromer and David Edwards, especially now that he came to Buffalo and now that he's in line to start. But you're looking at David Edwards as the potential starting left guard for the Buffalo Bills, and that's where he spent most of his career. 2,770 snaps for his career at left guard. Oh, by the way, He was the starter for the Rams in their Super Bowl win over the Cincinnati Bengals. And like I mentioned, a three-year starter for the Rams. He was scheduled to be the starter during his fourth season, the last year of his rookie deal. And then, unfortunately, he had a concussion that limited him to just four games. So then he comes to the Bills last year on a minimum-type deal. And he spent the season as a utility blocker, a big tight end, and did a really good job. That led to him signing a two-year, $6 million contract with the Bills. 
And I'm optimistic here. I've always viewed David Edwards as a starting caliber player in the NFL. One of the projects that I do every offseason is I go through and I study every player in the NFL and I put them into buckets in terms of what tier of player they are. We're actually doing that right now on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're going through every single team, every single roster, and putting every single player in a bucket, whether that's quality starter, franchise cornerstone, sufficient level starter, quality depth, replacement level, whatever bucket they fall into, I do this for every single player after studying them. And so David Edwards is a player that I've always had in this sufficient level starter bucket. Now, I acknowledge that he only has four starts over the last two seasons. That's worth mentioning. And you're looking at him as your 17-game starter, hopefully more, in 2024. But I certainly think this is within his wheelhouse to come in and do a good job. I think the X factor in this entire conversation as it relates to the left guard position is its impact on Deion Dawkins. You heard Dawkins recently talk about, yeah, I'm not really sure I've ever had the same guy next to me for consecutive seasons. And I've, I've done the research there, and he's absolutely true. It has been just guy after guy after guy at that left guard spot. And when you talk about the offensive line, not really being about how good each individual player is, but how those five guys work together as one, especially the the neighbors, right? The guy that's right adjacent to you, that's going to matter a lot. Is The more time on task and reps that you have together, the better you're going to perform. And if you go through Deion Dawkins' career, going back to 2017, the primary starter at left guard was Richie Incognito. In 2018, it was Vlad Dukas for 563 snaps and Wyatt Teller for 464 snaps. In 2019, it was Quentin Spain. In 2020, you had Ike Bucker for 803 snaps, Cody Ford for 257 snaps, Quentin Spain for 145 snaps, and John Feliciano for 72 snaps. In 2021, it was Ike Bucker at left guard for 618 snaps, John Feliciano for 336, Ryan Bates for 334. In 22, it was Roger Saffold. In 23, it was Connor McDovern. And in 2024, it's once again somebody different. So you're seeing Dawkins every year and sometimes within the same season have to continuously have a, a new partner next to him as the left guard. You'd love for there to be stability there. And it doesn't look like there's going to be once again. Now, do you have a sufficient level starter? Yeah, I think you do. But I, I think it's important for us to be mindful of this continual, you know, revolving door next to Deion Dawkins. Now, I feel better about, well, we already know what Connor McGovern was, and, and I feel pretty good about what David Edwards is going to be. But in in the past there, I mean, it was there was some, some shaky situations, whether that was Roger Saffold or, you know, Cody Ford, right? There's Vlad Dukas. There's not always been a good player next to him. So I think that's important for that to come together and, Man, you'd like to see it kind of continue for a few seasons if possible. All right, there's another guard that I want to talk about and a lot more, right? I got I got other position groups, other X factors, uh, other other players that need to break through for the Buffalo Bills. We're going to get into that and more on the other side of it, so be sure to stick with me. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. All right, folks, welcome back. David Edwards was a, a big part of what I wanted to get into today, so I'm glad we got that part of this conversation done, but there's a lot more that I want to cover. And I do want to talk about the right guard position, and not that we have any doubts that that's so Cyrus Torrance. Like, he's clearly going to be your starting right guard 
very excited about his potential in the NFL. But when you think about breaking through, you know, I, I do look at Osiris Torrance as a guy that has more ceiling to develop into. You go back to that early list that I had. It wasn't just like guys that hadn't performed as a starter. I mean, Spencer Brown was on that list and Oliver's on that list. You know, those guys, guys that have some tenure with the team can also break through. And I think that Osiris Torrance is a rookie. He arrived, he set a standard, and now I'm looking for him to take a step. And I don't want to spend as much time on Torrance as I did Edwards. But I think that there's a big opportunity for Osiris Torrance to evolve as a pass protector. Really satisfied with him in the run game. But the true pass sets was where you saw some some challenges for Osiris Torrance as, as a rookie. And I thought what it really came down to is against some of the twitchier interior pass rushers that could really get to the edges, really get to his edges. They put a lot of stress on his footwork to be able to slide and mirror and stay square in pass protection. And it led to some, you know, him getting beat in pass pro. And I thought that most of those issues happened more as the season moved along. And I think there's a number of reasons for that. First of all, the NFL is getting more familiar with you as a player and, and therefore know how, know how to attack you and attack your weaknesses more. But also I think that the rookie wall once again proved to be a true thing for Osiris Torrance. You've heard even Sean McDermott acknowledge the rookie wall. And Osiris Torrance played more football in 2023 than he ever has. Let me take you through his college journey as a four-year starter. In 2019, he played 859 snaps. In 2020 at Louisiana, 701 snaps. 2021 at Louisiana, 807 snaps. 2022 for Florida, 698 snaps. 2023 for the Buffalo Bills, 1,307 snaps. He played a ton of football. He played basically about double the football he's ever played before. And, oh, by the way, it's at the highest level in the NFL. And I always talk about that rookie year and what the offseason prior looks like. When you get done with your college season, you are spending the next several months going through the draft process. And for some guys, including Osiris Torrance, that's the senior bowl. Then you've got the combine. You're flying all over the country for official visits with teams. Teams are coming to you to work you out. You're really focused in on, you know, jumping high and running fast. You're focused in on how to answer questions correctly. What you're not focused in on is playing the game. So Osiris Torrance, that's what he did leading up to his rookie season. All of that. This year, Osiris Torrance has spent the offseason working on being the right guard for the Buffalo Bills. Very different. So not only is he going to be better positioned to handle the ramped up workload that comes with being in the NFL because he's now done this, but it's all he's got to focus on in terms of his football career. He's not having to review with his agent how to answer certain questions from teams during meetings or how to do a broad jump or how to sprint 40 yards fast. That's not He's not thinking about that at all. He's thinking about exactly what Aaron Cromer and Sean McDermott told him to work on in the exit meeting from the 2023 season. I think that'll be a big deal. So that's the guard conversation. Really a lot about David Edwards and then Osiris Torrance kind of taking that step and realizing even more of his potential. I do have to, to mention this. I just find myself really suspicious over Cedric Van Pran Granger and how he factors into this overall conversation. Fascinating to me. I don't want to sit here and say that I think he's got a chance to be a rookie starter, but I'm also not going to sit here and tell you that there's not a chance that he's a rookie starter. How can he make some noise? Is he the left guard? Is he is he legitimately competing with David Edwards for left guard? Will they platoon there? Being mindful of two things, not only David Edwards and him only starting four games in the last two seasons, but also what you what I literally just talked about with Osiris Torrance with Cedric Van Pran Granger coming out of college, having that type of offseason, 
getting ready to you know potentially play a ton of snaps if you were to start, maybe you platoon him. I, I'm just I feel like this is the guy that can crash the party. And you heard McDermott, you saw the Bills YouTube video, the behind the scenes draft coverage. Sean McDermott said when they were about to pick Ray Davis, Sean McDermott said, We need Van Pran. And then of course they got him with their next pick. You've heard the way Brandon Beans talked about him. You've heard the way Joe Brady's talked about him. I'm telling you, this is the guy here that could crash the whole party. So keep an eye on him. All right, let's get away from these guards. 15 minutes into this podcast, I've talked about guards. Love that, but I know that people like to hear about other things. Let's talk about something more sexy, and that is someone at wide receiver. Looking for players to break through in 2024, and I think someone at wide receiver's got to do it. I'm pretty comfortable having an idea of what the Bills are going to get in the passing game from Dalton Kincaid, from Khalil Shakir, from Curtis Samuel. And I know that there's no proof of concept with Curtis Samuel on the Bills, but he had 1,000 yards with Joe Brady. Curtis Samuel's been a productive player in the NFL with really bad quarterback play and no stability at offensive coordinator. I have a good idea of what Curtis Samuel is going to do for this team. And I feel pretty comfortable about what the running backs are going to do in this passing game. So Kincaid, Kincaid, Shakir, Samuel, and the running backs in the passing game. That piece of the pie, I think, is probably 65 to 70% of your passing game. That's a big chunk of it. But then I think the rest of it, and where you're still looking at a sizable portion of your target share, Someone at wide receiver or some combination of receivers needs to step up and break through. Looking at Keon Coleman, looking at Marquez Valdez-Scantling, looking at Chase Claypool. I think those are your three most likely guys to come in and really make some noise at wide receiver. And, And I'd be totally fine if it was a combination of all of them kind of filling a role and making plays. And I think you can look at any one of those three and find the path, whether it's Keon Coleman and the size, physicality, body control, hands, ball skills, working into space, getting the football. He's good after the catch. Like there's a, there's a level of of skill and, 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 and talent that I feel comfortable with that he can make some plays for this team as a rookie, even if he's really young for Marquez Valdez Scantling, like you're here to be a vertical threat, do that, make some plays for Chase Claypool. We're old enough to remember you being a a high second-round pick and what you did your first two seasons in the NFL. We know, we've heard you, we've heard Sean McDermott, like, it's do-or-die time for you, brother. The last two seasons have been a disaster. But somewhere inside of you is that dude that we saw the first two years, the guy that the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are amazing when it comes to wide receiver, not only like their scouting and evaluating evaluation process, but getting that out of them as pros. I mean, the resume in in Pittsburgh for receivers is unbelievable. They drafted you. you, They got the production. Like, somewhere inside of that guy is that guy. So one, one, two, or, I mean, hopefully all three of these guys come in and provide some impact here at wide receiver outside of what I feel comfortable the Bills are getting in Kincaid, Shakir, Samuel and the running backs in the passing game. Let's shift gears to the defense. I think on offense, it's about those guards. It's about somebody at wide receiver. I could probably talk about Ty Johnson and Ray Davis, but I I just kind of feel comfortable there. On the defensive side of the football, my number one concern for the Bills this year, it's not wide receivers. It's not new coordinators. It's pass rush and impact play from the defensive line. I think that's so critical. I I mean, I think it's really, really obvious when you go back and you ask yourself, why did the Bills lose to the Chiefs in the playoffs and the Bengals in the playoffs the year before that and the Chiefs the previous two years before that? Like, why, why did they lose those games? I think it's defensive line impact and lack thereof. A.J. Epinesa is the guy I want to talk about here. And I think he has, over the last two years, solidified himself as a nice depth piece for this defensive line. 
He's coming off back-to-back six-and-a-half sack seasons. And he's done that in a in a part-time role. I mean, only in 2022, 245 pass rush snaps. In 2023, 221 pass rush snaps. There's a lot more pass rush snaps coming for A.J. Epinesa in 2024. I would guess he's going to be comfortably over 300 snaps rushing the passer, maybe more. And so we we saw what he's done in, in a smaller sample size. Now he's been brought back on a two-year extension, and the opportunity is right there. I mean, this is real clear for him to be able to come in, play a lot of snaps, and hopefully do what he's done in a relatively small amount of snaps. Like high 30% is kind of where he's been, right around 40%. A lot of opportunity here. And I really liked what he was doing in 2023 before the rib injury. 13 games before the rib injury, the dude made splash plays. Again, in about a 38 to 40% of the snap market share. In those 13 games before the rib injury, I guess really 12 and a half, right? Because he didn't finish that Kansas City game. Six and a half sacks, six tackles for loss, two interceptions, eight pass breakups, 10 quarterback hits, forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. That's a lot of splash play production for a. 40% of the snap guy. And I talked about this on Monday. But his pass rush productivity, which is a PFF signature stat that considers per snap pass rush effectiveness, thinking of quarterback hits, thinking of pressures, thinking of hurries, weighted towards sacks. Weeks 1 through 13, for defensive ends in in the NFL that had at least 100 pass rush snaps, A.J. Epinesa ranked 10th in pass rush productivity at 9.6. That's outstanding. 10th. Weeks 14 through the divisional round. So post-rib injury, A.J. Epinesa, that that pass rush productivity score went from 9.6 to 4.3. 10th in the NFL to 94th. 94th in the qualifier there is players with at least 40 pass rush snaps. If A.J. Epinesa is like what he was before that rib injury and maybe takes a little bit of a step. The impact that I'm looking for on the defensive line is going to be helped a lot by what A.J. Epinesa can do. And then, of course, I mean, I could probably talk a lot about Greg Rousseau here, but I'm looking for the the Ed Oliver step here this year. But A.J. Epinesa is the guy that I feel like, man, if he could really break through, like take another step compared to what we saw the last two years, it's going to be a big, big difference maker for this football team. All right, folks, I want to talk about some more players on the defense and then an X factor for the overall team this year. So be sure to stick with me. All right, folks, welcome back. I want to talk a little bit more about another spot on this defense where I'm looking for somebody to break through in 2024. And that is at safety, where Taylor Rapp, mainly the guy that I'm looking at, and then, of course, a running mate. So Taylor Rapp and then Mike Edwards, Cole Bishop, DeMar Hamlin, whoever. Now, the funny thing about DeMar Hamlin, he has the most experience in terms of snaps played in the Bills defense of any guy in the roster at safety. And there's a little bit of buzz right now with DeMar Hamlin and how he's looking in OTAs. But safeties, the safety position, has been a critical piece of the identity of the Bills' defense under Sean McDermott. Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, love you guys. Thanks for everything. It's over. And now you're looking for a new pair of safeties to emerge. And I think you've got... I mean, I think between a three-year extension for Taylor Rapp and a second-round draft pick in Cole Bishop, I think you you see the players that they want that next tandem to be. But Taylor Rapp's the guy I'm looking at. Three-year extension, 26 years old, played last year on a one-year, $1.8 million contract. Wind up playing a good amount. I mean, 16 games played, four starts, was on the field for 42% of the defensive snaps. of the special team snaps, 
50 tackles, two pass breakups, an interception, fumble recovery, tackle for loss, half a sack. I know that Taylor Rapp had his low lights for sure, but the Bills still got good value out of a one-year, $1.8 million deal. I was hoping for more. I thought he looked really, really good in training camp. Super athletic. He's a rocked-up dude. And he's a guy that, I, as I went back to the beginning of this conversation, I talked about how I assess every player in the NFL. Taylor Rapp's a guy that's been in the adequate-level starter bucket for me for the last several years. And I've looked at him as a guy that, I, even before he came to Buffalo, and there's podcast receipts that I can point to to tell you about this, where I thought the Bills should tie, sign Taylor Rapp and be a successor for Jordan Poyer. Well, then they had last year the opportunity for those guys to play together, and then now here he is. And so I think that Taylor Rapp's a better football player than he showed last year. And I thought it was just a, a difficult year for him. He's talked about some personal struggles that he has. But early on, he's the third safety. And we talked a lot in the offseason about, okay, the Bills are going to go to some three safety sets. They're going to deploy Taylor Rapp alongside Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde. And they tried that in week one against the Jets. And folks, it was a disaster. He just it, him playing as that like extra box defender, it didn't really, it looked really bad. And so then before you know it, Matt Milano gets injured and now you have to play musical chairs with Jordan Poyer and, and Taylor Rapp's coming in and sub. And just the role was never very consistent for Taylor Rapp in 2023. I'm hopeful that. The player that I watched with the Rams, the player I watched at Washington, can be the player that I see for the Buffalo Bills in 2024. And obviously, this is a more defined situation. The Bills didn't sign Taylor Rapp to a three-year extension without a, like a pretty good plan for what they want him to do for this football team. And I take a lot of comfort in knowing that the Bills chose him, and they chose him after spending a year with him, and that being a year where he didn't play his best football. I have a lot of trust for Sean McDermott when it comes to the safety position because he's earned that throughout his entire career, dating back to, of course, Buffalo, Carolina, and Philadelphia. The resume is off the charts. I actually talked about that some at some point recently. Maybe last week was it the last podcast, the last week herd mentality. So I do take a lot of comfort in knowing that Sean McDermott, after spending a year with him, said, yeah, that's my guy. But now he's got to go out there and play good football. He's got to make impact plays. He's got to tackle better in space. He's got to be able to anticipate and play with more vision and coverage. That's going to be important. Safety position has been really important for this team, and Taylor Rapp has to come through. And then he needs a running mate, right? I feel comfortable with Mike Edwards, man. I've watched a lot of tape on Mike Edwards. That's a good ball player. feel really good about what he can be. But then you also have a second-round pick in Cole Bishop, and you have experience in DeMar Hamlin. Somebody. Somebody come on through and be a good starter next to Taylor Rapp, who we also need to be a good starter. The last thing I want to get to here today is when I'm looking for guys to break through, I'm looking for someone to break through as a returner. And I think the punt return conversation is pretty straightforward to me. It's either going to be Khalil Shakir or Daquan Hardy. Daquan Hardy, uh, one of the Bills draft picks, late round pick, 4-3 speed, slot corner for Penn State. I think he had pretty good tape as a slot corner. Like I, I'm a little surprised he fell in the draft. Maybe it's because he's a little small. But good tape as a slot corner, but I think where he can make an impact for the Bills right away is as a punt returner, where he handled those duties for Penn State this past season, had a couple of punt return touchdowns, high average, handled the ball well. I think that's where he can really make, make an impact, along with Khalil Shakir as kind of your hedge there. But this kick return stuff, and I've, I've talked about it at different points. I actually did a, a full episode on the kick return rule a few months ago. But this is going to have a, a significant impact on football games. You're going to see more explosive returns, and you're going to see the average starting field position for the offense go up probably about five yards. And look, I know it doesn't take a, a degree in football to realize that the closer you are, to the goal line, right? When you start your drive, the less distance that you have to go to score, the more likely it is that you score, right? So you want guys that can create explosive returns and, and set up your offense, right? That's what you're looking for. 
And I think Daquan Hardy factors into this mix at kick returner. I think Curtis Samuel does. I think Ty Johnson does. You need those guys to, to come through because it's going to impact football games. I don't want to make this about the Miami Dolphins, but like, think about what they have at, at, to be their kick returners. Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill, Raheem Mostert, Devon Achan, Jalen Wright. I mean, come on, good luck with that. Javon Holland can even return. That's going to be a problem. You want to be able to, to have guys that other teams are real concerned about, like I just <laughs> rattled off those names from the Dolphins. And I know that they are, <clears throat> excuse me, obsessed with speed, and, and so like this is kind of their identity. Like I get it. But you're looking for I'm, – I'm sure the Dolphins are looking they, – they, they're tired of losing to the Bills, right? They're tired of it. You hear the Dolphins fans, like, they're tired of it. When they're looking for the margins, right, like, how do we gain ground on the Bills? Let's get these explosive returns. Well, the Bills need some, some of that for themselves. And I look at Hardy, Samuel, and Johnson as your most likely guys to do that. And I, I keep talking about Jamal Agnew. I'd sign him. I would sign that guy. I think he's immediately, you know, a potential Pro Bowl candidate as a returner. Like, sign him. That would be what I would do. And have an even, even deeper pool of guys that you feel like can provide you those explosive returns and set your offense up. So there you have it, folks. Players that I'm looking for to break through in 2024 for the Buffalo Bills to continue their status as a contender. This has happened every year, right? We, we've seen this. Players taking leaps, becoming more impactful than they have been in previous seasons. And I think these are the guys that I look at as the candidates to do that. And hopefully they all do. Hopefully we reheat this conversation next May. And I'm saying, all right, David Edwards and Osiris Torrance and AJ Epinesa and Taylor Rapp and Mike Edwards and Daquan Hart, all these guys came through for the Bills. Who's going to be the guys in 2025? That's the whole goal here. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us here today on the podcast. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you have a great weekend. As always, I kindly ask that you share, subscribe, rate, and review. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills! And I look forward to catching up with you again real soon.